All right, guys, let's talk about the Scourge event. So here's my position in the leaderboard and my score. So I'm in the top 100 and that's good enough for me. I just wish to be in the top 500 to get that seven star uh, Morgan Le Fay. Um, yeah, how did I get there? Well, I have a 22 million TCP and I'm a whale or a big dolphin in a sense that I spend money in the game and I have many of the newer teams built up. And so take this into account when you're hopefully taking some advice or guidance from this video. All right, so let's go into scourges. So in my latest run, I ran all of these scourges for a scourge point of 247, Expect expected score of 1.87 million and I ended up with 1.888 million. So I did a bit better than the expected run score. I'm gonna give you some advice on how to beat these courses, which courses to take, which not to take and so on. So first of all, I would um, sort of categorize these scourges in a few different categories. There are some that make uh, notes 5, which you have to take into account um, most of these don't matter at all in other than the notes 5 and 10. So you need to think about notes 5 and 10 uh, when you're taking scourges or leaving scourges. If you can beat these in note 5 and 10, then it's going to be easy peasy because in the other notes you can use several teams. Yeah. Notes 5 and 10 are the, like the uh, deciding, deciding notes in the, in the whole event. So, there are a few uh, uh, scourges that I haven't uh, taken, I haven't even tried, because I feel that they are so bad that they will be ruining your game, especially in nodes 5 and 10. Here's one of them, blinded by power. When a player character uses their ultimate, they gain blind. I don't think that's, uh, that's something you can overcome in node 5 and node 10. I don't. I just feel like that's the case. Uh, I've been hearing the same from other content creators, and I'm so certain about it that I haven't, haven't even tried it. So that's one of the ones that I would not take almost in any situation. Uh, here's one more. When a player character takes damage, they gain bleed. This wouldn't be a problem if we only would ha only could use like all of our teams in nodes five and ten. But because you only can use your Web Warriors and your um, Dark Hunter teams in those nodes, you just cannot take the Bleeds, because you will die. Um, also, the Bleeds, when in these sort of events, the Bleeds is um, usually uh, calculated by the base power of the character giving you the Bleed. And, of course, in events like this, uh, the uh, NPC characters are, of course, they have a, so much more higher statistics than, than you do, so the bleeds are deadly. So in my uh, mind, this is one of the one of the ones that you cannot overcome in notes five and ten. Uh, also, here's two other ones. On spawn, enemies gain immunity, especially note five. This is not going to work. You need to land your debuffs to. Uh, make it possible. I think that's exactly the same case in Note uh, 10 as well. And then uh, when an enemy takes damage, they gain speed up for two turns. Yeah, this is a no-no. Uh, speed up on the enemy when they're doing loads more damage than you are just doesn't work. You will be overrun in, in a minute or a second. Other than that, I don't think any of these are undoable. Uh, the experimental serum, I haven't taken because that 10% health gain from for the enemies uh, is actually quite hard to overcome, and it only offers you one point. The health ones are definitely something that you can work around, but they are making the notes, especially note 5 and 10, so much more harder, and they're giving you so few points that I haven't taken these ones. So that's the one that I would almost almost never take. Uh, the same goes for 
uh, enemies gain plus 20% max health, only five, uh, 5 points, and yeah, it makes it so much more harder. The one that I'm currently considering uh, is the one that gives you 30% max health for the enemies, and this gives you 15 points. And the only reason I would take this is to top my score and maybe try to uh, slip into the top 50. And because even though this is a lot harder, this also gives a lot more points. So if I choose this, I would go to 1.9 million a bit more when I'm doing my runs right. But that's about the, uh, about the uh, scourges. So I have, I have been uh, taking almost all of them. And there's ways you can work around this. You have to think about your teams. You have to think about your abilities. You have to think about recharging your characters and everything to make the way things work. But it's possible. Um, we can talk about the scourges one by one super fast. When a player character gains stealth, they can taunt. This doesn't work on Miles on his um, when he enters the uh, battlefield, so that's not super power super powerful. Only one point though, so it might not be worth it. I do note that if you're playing with uh, uh, Dark Hole characters, this is a super bad one because they gain stealth all the time. Well, not all the time, but every now and then, and getting a taunt for for them is super bad. Uh, summoned enemies gain twenty percent max health. That's not that's not bad. That's actually pretty easy. There are a few, I think, uh, phoenixes and maybe I, th I think there's a uh, crack here and there or something like that. So that's not really a bad one. Um, when a player character gains ability energy, apply slow to them. Well, you just you're just avoiding getting that ability energy. So that's not really a problem. There are a few characters that. Uh, dish out ability energy. Most notable are uh, maybe Captain Sam uh, with the special, Suri with the special, uh, maybe a few other ones. But yeah, I try not to use those characters to make it a bit easier. And when you're deciding to not use those, you can take all of the uh, energy ones. So these two are free ones. Um, Enemies generate one additional uh, ability energy each time they use, uh, they get ability energy. Yeah, I'm just fighting against ultimates all the time. Sometimes that actually gives you an advantage, in a sense. And now that I'm giving them energy, I don't mind that they get any energy from anything after this, because they are already getting so much energy. Dark Resolve 2 is a free one. Uh, when a player character gains ability energy, they gain defense down, like I said, avoid getting ability energy, and this is not a problem. When any uh, player character dies, enemies gain ability energy. Well, we are sort of avoiding dying, and at the same time, since they're getting all of the ability energy anyways, this doesn't matter. Back in the fight, a free one. Yeah, well, I'm not taking those ones. Uh, when an enemy... Energy, uh, sorry, enemy character drops below 50% health, they gain death proof. This is something that you can easily work around. It just needs one more hit. And when you're using characters that do uh, chain attacks and splash attacks, you can usually use those to uh, get rid of those death proofs and, and kill the characters. Uh, player character healing is reduced by 20%. This hasn't felt too much of a trouble. Um, I'm mostly not relying on super um, like characters or teams that heal a lot, so in that sense, I don't mind this. Um, if you're thinking about maybe maybe your web warriors are are um, a bit squishy, maybe you can take this out. But I haven't uh, felt that that's too bad. Uh, poison energy uh, two again. Uh, when we are not using characters that give ability energy, we don't have to worry about those. When a play character blocks, apply stun to them. This is something you have to work around, but this is doable. You, you can always, of course, block with any character. But if you avoid uh, abilities that give you deflect, uh, if you avoid characters that have 
high block chance, uh, you can work around this. Uh, some characters and abilities to note are of course Captain Sam again, uh, blocking all the time. Uh, Shuri giving uh, deflects. Um, actually, Moon Dragon with the special giving deflects. So you just have to have to work around a bit, but all in all, it doesn't feel too bad. Uh, when a player character drops below 50% health, apply trauma to them. To me, this feels like it's sort of a, I wouldn't say trap, but <laughs> sort of a trick in a, in a sense that trauma doesn't do anything on, on its own. You have to have a debuff to get rid of when you have trauma. So if you don't get too many debuffs, the trauma doesn't do anything on its own. If it would be something like disrupt, that would be just horrible. But trauma in itself doesn't do too much, so you can definitely work around this one. Um, dark, dark Rally. When a player character uses their ultimate, all enemies gain one ability energy. Like I said, we're just giving them all the energy anyways, and they're just doing uh, ultimates and basics, well, ultimates and sorry, specials. So I don't, I don't mind. So just yeah, take all the energy. We're just fight through it. Uh, play character ultimate abilities cost one more uh, ability energy. This is definitely a hard one, but it's something that you can work around. So, uh, this is definitely one of those that if you're struggling with my Scourge comp, you can take this one out and you will probably do a lot better. Uh, while Rally is a free one. Uh, Borrow Fatigue 2, player character special abilities cost one more ability energy. Yeah, uh, what can I say about this one? Uh, this requires us to actually recharge our characters, our web warriors and, uh, and uh, Dr. Voodoo in the first few nodes to make sure that we can fight in the nodes 5 and 10. Other than that... Yeah, it can be troublesome, but it works really well with the next one. Whenever a player character uses their special ability, they gain ability block. So, when you're not uh, using your specials all the time, you can just check your abilities. And when you have a special ready, you just need to check if you have uh, ultimate coming up or not. If it's coming up on the next turn, don't use your ability energy if you if you need to use that ultimate on the next turn. If you don't have your ultimate coming up next, then just use it. The ability block doesn't do anything. Because you'll be just doing basic on the next turn anyways. So this is something that looks scary, but it's actually pretty easy. And I feel like people are too afraid about that. You should definitely take that it's easy to work around. On enemy turn, they gain offense up. Yes, this is a hard one. One of those ones that if you feel like this Scourge comp is too hard, definitely take this one out and you will be doing a lot better. But at the same time, you can definitely work around this. Uh, in notes 5 and 10, you are relying on that perfect RNG anyways. A lot of dodges and a lot of burst damage. So it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't affect the game as much as you would think in the first uh, second that you look at this skirt. And in the other notes, it definitely makes the, the notes harder and it sort of requires you to use the full extent of your roster more in the other notes. So this makes like the notes, all of the notes a bit harder, but it's not as, as uh, um, dangerous as you would first think. On turn, apply two heal blocks to player characters. Yep, yeah, that's nasty. But at the same time, if you want to have a top score, you probably need to take this one. Um, it doesn't... Like I said, you always have to think about notes 5 and 10. If you can beat notes 5 and 10 with the Scourge, then you don't have to worry about the rest of the notes, because you most likely will be doing those with several teams. But heal block... Definitely felt scary at, at the start, but wasn't that bad when I actually played with it. But that's the 
scourges that I had on the on the run that I did last last time. And like I said, the next run that I will be doing, if I'm gonna be doing, I'm not sure about it yet, but I will be taking the experimental serum three uh, and try to jump into 1.9 million uh, and hopefully top 50. But other than that, I don't feel like I'm, I'm using any of these scourges after this run. But let's go into the actual notes and I will uh, explain a bit what I did here. So the first node, uh, you can use several teams in here. And this is definitely a node where you should be recharging your Web Warriors and your Dark, uh, uh, your Dr. Voodoo. So few teams that I've I felt like are super good in here uh, that you would not think about maybe first are Uncanny X-Men. Um, this node has to be done in at least two uh, attacks anyways. I think I did like maybe four or five attacks on this one. So yeah, I I'm not using like the best character in here. I'm saving those for the second node. So I, I used in my last run, I started off with uh, Dad Bros, and with Dad Bros, I had um, Moon Knight and Fury. Fury was there to give the speed up, uh, Moon Knight was there to give the uh, debuffs, especially those blind, and Dad Bros were there just to uh, do a lot of damage, and I think the fifth one was actually uh shang chi to do the speed meter and the damage so i used that team to clear up a bit more than half of the node and then i used i think some scrappy teams until i got to the last wave and last two characters when there were only two characters left then i entered with my uh web warriors and i subbed out uh, spider punk to dr voodoo and the goal there is to use uh, all of their basics uh, at least two times so you can get the ability energy uh, for the notes 5 and notes 10 if you can do that perfect and one thing to note uh, is that um, the efficiency score that you get from these notes the extra bonus points that you get is not working properly and it resets uh, every time you enter with a new team and this means that in every node if possible the best way to do it uh, is to clear up to the last possible character and, and let him have like 10% health then die and enter with a tune that kills uh, the last character with one shot so the the least you the least amount of turns you take on the last attack the last team the better but yeah that's about the first node the second node i enter with my uh sort of main hero team uh which was eternals uh with new warriors and kestrel and then i just i just one shot this node uh and I saved up my Kestrel and Icarus, uh, sorry, uh, Icarus and Cersei's um, uh, abilities, the ultimates, uh, so that they are ready uh, in the cosmic nodes. All right. So in this one, I think I used, uh, which is actually <laughs> quite um, uh, interesting, I actually used Mr. Sinister, Emma. Um, then I used Omega Red, Doom, and Lady Deathstrike. The idea there is to um, try to control Shang Chi so that she, uh, he doesn't do the ultimate. Uh, control Psylocke so that he she doesn't throw the debuffs back at you. Uh, control. Uh, x23 so that she doesn't uh wipe you with the ultimate um put them disrupts on miss marvels from doom and when you're using doom try to make sure that 
uh, when you're using your ultimate and when you're uh, exploding with the uh, doom bots, uh, that you're sort of at least close to killing the wave because when you do that, they will be getting uh, ability energy and they will be just going with the ultimate, ultimate next. So bear that in mind. And um, definitely it's a good idea to use um, Striker on, on Omega Red, as you should be. And what I found really interesting is that, for example, characters like The Thing, which does damage to you when you hit it, uh, and your squishy characters will suffer from hitting him, but it's a really good idea to hit him with the basic, if he has the vulnerability with Omega Red, because Omega Red will be taking dam uh, life back, so it doesn't affect him, even though it affects all of the squishy characters. But yeah, that's about it. Uh, on this note, I actually uh, had this weird team where I had um, Jubilee, I had uh, Scarlet Witch, I had Emma, and I had Wolverine and Sabretooth. The idea there was, this was a tricky one, I, I tried to uh, get to the last wave uh, as, as far as I can, so that I can clean up the last characters and get some extra points when I'm just doing few attacks at the end. And the first attack, attack required a lot of retries, but the idea there was to um, control uh, the characters that are... Because basically all of these characters like uh, the Karnak and the Thing and Black Bolt, they are from, from the first wave. They are all just one-shotting you if, you if you let them hit you without anything. So I'm just using my Wolverine and Jubilee to blind characters. I'm using my... Um, uh, sorry, I'm using my... Um, Wolverine and Sabretooth to dish out a lot of bleeds. I'm using my Emma to use the ultimate to blind and kill a character, and I'm using my Scarlet Witch to just extend all the bleeds and get them out of the board ASAP. And of course, Jubilee's ult is all, of course, really good in there, but it requires a lot of finesse and a lot of careful planning, a lot of tries, but I got it done, and yeah. It felt good. Uh, Sabretooth special was really good uh, when I could get the offense down on few characters so that they wouldn't one-shot me. The blinds are working perfectly. The stuns are working perfectly. Uh, so yeah, that, that's about it. I can't remember what I used at the, as the last attack, but... It was most likely something like uh, Omega Red or something. But you need to save your Omega Red and Lady Deathstrike for the villain node. So yeah, bear that in mind. So don't let them die in the first attack. Alright, so then comes the node 5. Uh, in here I'm just going with the full Web Warriors. And uh, I'm not using Dark Hunters at all. So I'm just going with one attack. Um, you should put your... Um, Spider-Man, the original one in the middle, and hope that they hit him first and that he dodges. When they hit him first and he dodges, he will get speed meter and he will get uh, offense up. Then he can go with the special and just spread that uh, defense down and slow to everyone. That's, that's a key thing. After that, everything feels a lot easier. And yeah, just bear in mind that you need to save some uh, control abilities for Cloak. Um, try to kill Bishop and, and Star Lord T'Challa in a timely manner, because the longer you let them live, the more they will be doing damage. At the end, um, of course, um, one thing, I'm not letting Dacker hit me at all, so... If Dagger, because Dagger will be uh, using either the special or the ultimate, if she uses those, you're just dead. So I'm not letting her use those. Either she's ability block or she doesn't do anything, so bear that in mind. 
in the second wave um strip down those um buffs from fury with the uh basic from miles control that um uh, cloak and kill the other characters and that's it and you have to do this several times in the last few runs i haven't done it for more than maybe 20 times so it has been really good to me but yeah you have to you have to yeah do several attempts and you have to have all of your um uh, web warriors alive at the end of the node and it would be best if they would be at least close to 50 percent life or something like that you can go with a bit lower like i did on the last run i had like my spider-man at maybe 20 percent life and and so was uh my let me think punk and ghost spider but i managed with that but it feels like a, it was too risky so try to get them to be at least close to 50 percent and if it's bit down it doesn't matter but if it's it's way down than that then it's might be just uh, too hard to fight the note 10. all right uh, so then comes the villain nodes and on the villain nodes you definitely want to use your um uh, uh weapon axe characters they are really good in here uh so are uh, at least some of the um dark hunters i'm i think i used um morgan in here but if you use many of them they get those deflects and they get stunned and that's super annoying but i actually have my uh first no uh, first run in dd5 done so i used dormammu in here uh so i think it was something like omega red dormammu uh morgan lady death strike and maybe Mordo, or something like that, something in the lines of that, and yeah, that's about it. Uh, in this note, uh, you have to make sure that a bit, you have to control some characters. There's a Mr. Sinister who will be cloning. If you're using characters like Morgan or maybe even uh, Dormammu, you will need to do something about Mr. Sinister because him cloning the wrong character might mean the end of that try. Uh, you need to know that Groot will be debuffing. If you're using uh, characters that use a lot of buffs, you either need to uh, turn me to rewind him or slow him or ability block him, stun him, something. And the same goes for uh, uh, Rocket Raccoon because I don't want that... Uh, tone to hit uh, Groot because you'll be hitting Groot after that and you'll be getting slow and that's just, that's just harmful. And now that I'm going back, it wasn't Moro that I used, I actually used uh, Doctor Strange Heartless in here. And Doctor Strange Heartless is really good because he can turn me to rewind and, and the uh, tentacles slap real hard. <laughs> Alright. Uh, so the last one uh, this is a tricky one. So in here you need a lot of control. And I think I used characters like let me let me try to remember. I think I used um uh, Lady Death Strike. Lady Death Strike's uh point in here is to turn me to rewind uh Silver Surfer so that I can do other abilities on him. No, sorry. Um, yeah, Lady Death Strike. Yes. Uh, then I used. I think I used Hela. Hela was there to. The Greg will be attacking Psylocke, and Psylocke will be retaliating, and you will get some turn meter from him. I used uh, Omega Red uh, to ability block and everything. Then I used uh, Mordo. Moro was there to uh, stun uh, Silver Surfer and spread blinds. And when the uh, when the blind hits someone, I actually used Hela to spread that around because the um, 
blind was really really useful with the other characters and you need to let me check you need to and you need to do something with with the Psylock so that she doesn't uh, throw those back at you but yeah it feels like because this is the last villain node uh, last villain node so you don't need to save your Omega Rage or anything in here so I just went to the first wave with those characters made sure I had all the control and killed them all and when the second wave uh, dropped I was almost dying and I let my characters die and save just few characters in that node and then I entered with some other characters and just wiped that node to get that extra points when doing multiple attacks. Alright, so then comes the Cosmic Nodes. On the Cosmic Nodes, I uh, went in in the first node with uh, full Black Order. Um, I sort of did, I would say, half of the node with Black Order. It was pretty hard and you need to do several uh, several resets because it all depends on who Omega Red decides to um, uh, ability block. <laughs> and it felt like it's most of the time he's just ability blocking Thanos and that just doesn't do. Um, and I think the best idea is to let uh, that mercenary lieutenant live until he gets his first uh, special done and then you uh, flip those and you can survive a bit longer um when i did the black order the second uh, attempt w was with um, uh, infinity watch and it was super easy to clear it up and i actually saved most of my no 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 i think i let my infinity watch die at the end and again went in with the cleanup team at the end and got it done in this node, I would say that it, this is the reason that you should save your uh, Icarus and Cersei's ultimate for this node in the node 2. So this node I did with um, Cersei, Icarus, Kestrel, uh, Invisible Woman and let me think, let me think. Who was it? Maybe Deathpool? No, Silver Surfer. Silver Surfer, yes. And yeah, they are, they do a lot of buffs at the start, and you just flip all of those around and you just destroy the node. It's super easy. One of the easiest nodes in, in this uh, whole uh, event. And you don't need to save any of those, so you can die at the end if you want to and clean up with the cleanup team and get a bit more points. In the last note, uh, yeah, this is a tricky one, but there's a really good tactic that I learned from uh, Dorgy Dad. Uh, so kudos to him, uh, great content creator, uh, great uh, MSF mind, and helped me with the strategy and, and it works like a charm. Uh, the idea here is to um, firstly attack with your Dark Hunters and your Spider-Man. And do it. Uh, you should set up your team in a sense that your Spider-Man is in the middle, and you go in as many times until Proxima hits uh, Spider-Man with the special, and Spider-Man dodges that. So this way you won't get any offense down on your team. When that is done, you go hard on the enemy uh, Cyclops. You use the special from uh, Morbius. Gets a lot of bleeds on Colossus, Cyclops, mm -hmm. and Proxima. Uh, the uh, more in the in the side will not be getting any blinds because he has immunity. But if you have Morbius as a as a raider, he might get that vulnerable, and that vulnerable will be important later. Then you go in with your Ghost Rider, uh, do the uh, same thing, go with the special on Cyclops, get a lot of pleats on uh, Colossus, Cyclops, uh, Proxima, and hopefully get that uh, vulnerable on, on more. Then you go in with your uh, Doctor Voodoo, your Doctor Voodoo will be using the special on Maw, and if Maw has that... Um, 
uh, vulnerable, and your Doctor Voodoo is a is a, a skirmisher. Uh, he will clean that death proof from him, and the other characters near more will be just killing him. And once that done, that's done, then you can uh, hit with your Elsa uh, on. Oh, sorry, I have to go back a little a bit. Uh, the first turn you take, of course, is your Spider-Man starting the chain and doing his special from Colossus and doing the defense down slow on Colossus, Cyclops, uh, Proxima, and hopefully the rest of the team uh, on the left side. All right, but uh, once Elsa gets his turn, you can do the ultimate on either Cyclops, Colossus, and Proxima. Or if they feel if you feel like you have a lot of bleeds in there and they are about to go down, you can use that ultimate also on the left side on Thanos, uh, Magic, and uh, Storm. And once those bleeds starts to tick, they will drop down fast. And your um, uh, idea after that is to just survive long enough for you for your Doctor Voodoo to get out of ability block and then use his ultimate to um, um, uh, heal the team back up. And when Spider-Man dies in the middle, he usually dies quite fast, uh, he will be getting, uh, giving your team offense up, so you will be doing a lot more damage after that. Try to, uh, if, if there's any chance, try to either let the um, uh, Phoenix die or turn into Dark Phoenix, if possible, and try to kill any of those characters you have left in there, if you can. But getting Phoenix down will be super helpful. And when those guys do go down, then you go on with the rest of the Web Warriors and just clean up. And that's it. That's how it goes. And, yeah, that's about it. That's how I did it. That's how I did... 1,888,000 uh, points and got into top 100. Hope this helped you. If it did, please like and subscribe. And if you have any comments, questions, uh, criticism, anything, please let me know in the comments. I'm always happy to answer. And please do um, uh, go and find Dorky Dad. He'll be. You can find him in in um, in YouTube easily. He does a lot of quality videos, and I've been I've been watching and following him for a long time, and you should you should do that also. But all right, hope you enjoyed. See you in the next video. Bye.